Hi, what's up, y'all? It's Kirk. What's popping? It's D-Boss reacts to this vid by JB and Fargo. It's titled, The Biggest Villains of Black YouTube. Are we getting real specific? Okay, <laughs> let's see uh, who he addresses in this vid. Let's watch. There's one thing that us viewers have in common, a favorite content creator. Someone who kept you glued to the screen due to enjoyment and that you came home from school looking forward to watch. But what happens when your favorite content creator is committed the worst crime imaginable or is a bad person overall, leading to the community labeling them as a villain? It's far gone. These are the biggest villains of black YouTube. Before everything went downhill for EDP 445, his reputation was almost flawless. Many people just wrote him off as a passionate Eagles fan with an insane gooning problem. I mean, just look at this title. One video he'll go on a rant talking about how bad the Eagles played, and the next he would debate if choking your chicken would be considered a sport. Sick individual. It was an unhealthy medium, but he was still virtually loved by what? many until this infamous moment. In April of 2021, he was caught trying he to love that word ass concept. what he I'll called be. a cupcake. If you want this to go well, I recommend you have a talk about it. I have heard the story. Okay, so what brings you out here today? Um, well, I was uh, coming out here to... Well, well, I was actually coming out here to pick up a cupcake. Since then, he's been terminated from YouTube, which forced him to get a real job, and actually got caught for doing the same thing in 2023, where he threatened to seriously hurt the girl. And like I mentioned in previous videos, he keeps making new YouTube channels to evade his ban, with the YouTube turning a blind eye to his actions. And throughout these past few years, he continues to play victim, saying he was set up by the predator catchers, or blames mental health instead of owning up to his mistakes. When you hear someone say black YouTube, many creators come to mind. Mainly the wholesome, well-regarded ones like Corey Kenshin, Verlizzi, and Caleb City Corey make very Philly. marketable content. However, where King Sid and his hypersexualized content is another side of the same coin. On the surface, it looks to be Sid's own variation of Jubilee's content until you click the video. I got something to say. Real sh I feel like you can spit me the fuck out. So, I'm definitely smashing it. I want to spit on it. I want to lick on it. I want to oh, swallow it. Oh. So, yeah. Smash. <laughs> Freaky draw. You freaky frog! You freaky frog! Like I said, hypersexualized on top of exploiting kids. He and many other creators play a role in the degeneracy, but that's one of the many reasons why people have grown to hate him. This starts with Sid facing significant backlash after several friends and former associates exposed him for mistreating them. This expose started with fellow content oh, creator Nick So Ugly, who revealed Sid's alleged mistreatment regarding living arrangements in their shared content house. Other former Ain't friends no like Call of Duty, Jeff, Smooth Geo, and arch nemesis Miami the Kid follow suit, sharing similar negative experiences with Sid. On top of that, his ex girlfriends Kenzie and Diamond Flawless accused him of being a toxic partner. Come on, bro. Come on, that sucker. You need to go on one side and pick on. We can make the whole side, but stay on that side. That's why I ain't crossing back and forth. Ain't my shit, but stay here. And on top of that, it's like nothing I do is okay, bro. I go to staying quiet, not saying nothing, cause I'm just, I'm just letting them talk because I know what's up. Oh, you guilty as why you not responding to them? I go to apologizing, apologizing. I ain't apologizing to them. I'm not apologizing to no that making me trying to get canceled, that's posting shit about me that's not true. So I go to apologizing to y'all for what they said. I'm not trying to make y'all think. I'm that person. I apologize to y'all. Apologizing to us. The public quickly turned against Sid, with many fans unsubscribing and criticizing his actions online. As a result, King Sid's YouTube channel saw a significant drop in views and subscribers, losing over 100,000 subscribers at the height of the controversy. Oh. Prior to being exposed, Sid's videos would routinely gather around 800,000 to 1 million views or even more, but post controversy, they now average around 60,000 to 700,000 views. A huge drop off. Despite issuing an apology and trying to move past this, Sid's reputation is taking a hit. While he continues to post content, the negative reception from his fan base and the exposure of his behavior has undeniably damaged his YouTube channel. Another the thriving creator that damaged more than his oh, YouTube man. channel is Pretty Boy Fredo. Fredo, a once prominent NBA 2K YouTuber, saw his career soar with viral gaming videos, pranks, and challenges, especially during the NBA 2K 16 17 era. However, his rise to fame was later overshadowed by accusations of faking videos, exploiting fans, and getting involved in multiple online beefs. Fredo's transition from gaming content led to widespread criticism, particularly from YouTuber Agent Zero, who called out his fabricated content. Fredo's aggressive response to these critiques created more controversy as he lied about Agent Zero inciting death threats, intensifying the negativity around. He would later apologize to Agent, but the damage was already done. His feuds with other YouTubers, notably DDG, where personal insults and threats were exchanged, showed us a side of Fredo that made him easy to hate. Because I'm at the point right now where you use my name in video after video after video. You see his hand. I'm slapping his out your ass. That's it. I'm at that point. I been told you to pull up in July. You didn't want the smoke, bro. You didn't want the f***ing smoke, my nigga. You capped out. On everything I love, you f***ing capped out, my nigga. You capped out. You a bad nigga on everything I love, nigga. You capped out. No, nigga. I've been saying Fredo being canceled. My nigga, you can't cancel me. I got this shit out the mud. I got it out the mud. The only nigga that can fall off by choice is me. If I choose to. If I choose to stop working, that would be the only reason. But I, I'm, I'm way too strong, my nigga. As criticism of Fredo grew, he continued to face backlash for not only faking content, but also manipulating his closest friends. By 2023, and I was he always very confused by this label that he put on himself. This inaccurate label. This inaccurate description of, of being pretty. Whoever ever called you pretty 
There are some men who are pretty. So that's not why you ain't pretty. Because you a man. You just not. Nobody's pretty. Where is the pretty? <laughs> Always very confused by that. Like who lied? Year long break, Fredo right returned to YouTube claiming personal growth and offered apologies for his past actions. However, his return was met with skepticism and it were very much warranted. That same year, a series of exposés from former collaborators and friends of Fredo accused Fredo of scamming and unethical controlling behavior, leading to another recent disappearance from YouTube for nearly a year. While he was gone, rumors of financial struggles emerged, including allegations of lawsuits and debt casting doubt on his stability. Fredo returned in 2024 with another apology, citing battles really? with personal demons and family issues, but his reputation remains severely damaged in the eyes of many. Despite expressing the desire to build his YouTube career with a more positive approach, the overwhelming negativity and controversy surrounding him make his path to redemption uncertain. But for Lothar God, redemption is probably out of the question. The story of Lothar God has been covered extensively on YouTube for one reason only, infamy, which he often mistakes for genuine fame and popularity. Just look at this grocery list of reasons why he's hated, all of which can be verified with a simple Google search. It's crazy because I don't hate the man, I find him slightly I've entertaining, him but I know what he is at this point. Lothar God- And I, I know a lot of people in the black YouTube space. I would argue most of them, but him i've never even seen his face even if i don't know them per se like i don't i've never watched a video i recognize their face like that young sid guy i've never watched an actual video but i've seen his face before but I've never seen this man in my life. Named Dale Wilson has experienced a brief moment at the mountaintop before a steep decline in his online presence, mostly driven by years of toxic behavior and numerous controversies. Once boasting over 400,000 followers across Twitch and YouTube, LTG's aggressive and confrontational style, initially appealing to some in the fighting game community, or FGC, has created a sub-community of detractors, leading to his removal from various social media platforms, the base being YouTube for ban evasion. His rants, blame shifting, and rage quitting following video game losses, combined with insults towards other players and arbitrary bans of viewers, contributed to the erosion of his credit ability and overall viewer base. Conflicts with many respected members of the FGC and incidents like doxing his enemies or naysayers further highlight his destructive and immature behavior. You dumbass niggas that created Namco, you're fucking farts. Capcom, you're fucking farts, you dumbass niggas. Make it so that I can see who the fuck I am playing before I press ready on my game. Oh, I don't want to have to play the same niggas. Every time I turn on the game, I'm ready for it. LTG's problematic personal that life also adds to his tarnished reputation, sir. particularly his controversial relationship with his ex-girlfriend Elena, who was allegedly a minor during the early parts oh. of their relationship. Not to mention he was recently exposed for allegedly being a deadbeat father to a 10-year-old daughter and has a substantial $120,000 debt. This, along with the list I showed earlier, paints a disturbing picture of his character. Creeping up on 40 years old, LTG's future remains uncertain, but his story shows the importance of integrity and accountability for content oh, creators in the online world. Let me know what you guys think about these creators in the comments. I'm the anger. <laughs> The anger coming off him with a lot. Um, yeah, these people definitely cause their own decline. They have nobody to blame but themselves. It, it, it's not like they uh, were targeted or anything like that. Like, you caused this decline, okay? You chose to be the villain. No one pushed you into this role. This was a conscious decision, you know? Because you could argue that some people got pushed into being a villain. Like, when I think of Joker, <laughs> you know? It's just like, oh, y'all pushing me to the brink of madness and now fuck all y'all, you know? But no. Y'all, y'all, y'all chose this life. So you get what you get. Anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me know what other videos you're gonna watch and I'll see y'all the next one. Bye!